Gödel's incompleteness theorem is one of the most interesting results in all of mathematics. Informally, it says that there is a truth that cannot be proved. There is a truth that cannot be proved. That's an informal statement. In, in a few minutes, I'll give you a much more rigorous statement. And a few minutes after that, I'll actually prove that rigorous statement. When I first heard about this theorem, I was 20 years old. And it really upset me. It really disturbed me. And I felt like I had learned something that fundamentally altered the way I perceived the world around me. You see, by the time I was 20, I had lived in four different countries. I was born in Nigeria. I grew up mostly in Kuwait, in the Middle East. And I had also lived in India as a child. And wh when I heard about this theorem, I was in college in the United States. So these were four different cultures. And I had seen that people in these cultures, in these cultures believed in different truths. They just simply had different, basic different differences in how they perceived the world around them. But in all of the cultures, it seemed like there were two dominant ways for people to believe that something is true. The first way is the way of religions. In this way, you believe that something is true because of faith. Either that truth resonates with something inside of you and you trust that feeling, or maybe you trust the people, you know, your parents or a priest or other symbols of authority that you, you trust their judgment and, and you believe that the things they are saying are true. That's the first, first way. The second way to believe in a truth is the way of science. You believe that something is true because we have done experiments, we have made arguments, we've used logic and reasoning uh, to convince ourselves that something is true and then you don't need to trust anyone once you see that logic, once you see the data, once you see the arguments. Those, those things themselves convince you that something is true. Those are the two ways. And after I had moved across cultures a few times, I came to uh, lose my faith. Okay? And I strongly uh, adopted the second approach. Uh, I believe in things that were true because they had explanations that were watertight. Okay? They had proofs. And I thought that you know, given enough time, I could understand everything in the world that was true using the second method. I could prove that everything that was true uh, is true using logic, reasoning, and uh, data, experiments. Yet here was uh, a theorem that inflicted a mortal wound on my worldview because it said that no matter how hard I tried, no, how mu no matter how much time I spent, there would always be a true fact, a true statement that I would not be able to get to using logic, reasoning, and uh, you know, arguments, watertight arguments. So I found it very disturbing. And I think you should too. I think you should too. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, just having faith is the right approach to, to acquiring truths. That, that's not necessarily what it's saying, but it does say that there is a basic problem with uh, trying to prove that things are true. All right, so let's get now to the more formal statement. To, to get to the formal statement, I need the concept of a proof checking program. A proof checking program you can think of as just uh, yourself. You know, I can think of myself as a program. If I'm interested in trying to understand what's true about the world, then I can think of my own brain as a program. 
And this program uh, is given two things as input, a statement, S, and a proof of that statement, a purported proof of that statement, P. Given these two inputs, the program runs, manipulates uh, those two inputs, and does some computation on them. And eventually, it's supposed to output 1 if and only if P is a convincing proof uh, that the statement S is true. Okay, so that is a proof checking program. Girdle's incompleteness theorem says that given any such proof checking program C, there is a true statement S such that for every choice of P, the, ch the proof checker C will reject that proof as a valid proof of S. So if you think about the C as the code of one of our brains, say my brain, then this theorem says that um, if, you, if you write down a program that simulates exactly what my brain is going to do, then there is going to be a truth state, true statement S such that no matter what argument is presented to me, I will never be convinced that the statement is true even though the statement is true. Okay, so there is a true statement that is going to evade, uh, evade me. I will never be able to understand why it is true. Now, uh, sometimes I hear people discuss this theorem. Um, I've heard some famous physicists say that uh, it doesn't really talk about humans understanding the truth and, and sometimes they appeal to uh, you know I've heard people refer to the fact that the, the world has quant things like quantum mechanics which are non-deterministic uh, and, and don't follow the execution of a program but I think this is all misguided we don't have any physical theory um, any theory of the theory of the world that, that can actually evade simulation by a program we are not interested here in the efficiency of the program that's running okay, to simulate a physical process. So even if my brain is using quantum mechanics in some strange way, it's really unclear that it is, but even if it is using quantum mechanics to do some strange thing, a program that's trying to simulate my, my brain can, in principle, write down the Schrodinger equation and carry out, uh, you know, follow through the quantum mechanics and compute the probabilities and the likelihood that my brain will do this or that and compute exactly what my brain computes. Okay, so we have not yet discovered any physical process that cannot be simulated by programs. We just don't know of such a progress, uh, process. So this theorem really is damning um, about our ability to, to convince ourselves of truths using proofs. So that's the statement of the theorem and now let me prove that it's true. So to prove that it's true, the, the proof will, will concern a few objects. Throughout, uh, let x be some long text, okay, a long string. Um, and think of n as a very large number, n is a very large number, and the statement s that we will use has the following structure. It will, it will claim that every program that outputs x has length bigger than n. So if you have a program whose output is equal to x, then the length of the code of that program must be bigger than n. That is the claim made by s. it's easy to see that given any fixed n, there's always going to be uh, one x, in, in fact, infinitely many x, for which the statement s is true. That's because given any fixed n, the number of programs of length n, this is a finite number. This is a finite number. 
the number of potential strings x is infinite. So each one of those programs of length n can output, you know, at most one string when you run it. So the, the strings output by programs of length n is a finite set of strings. So there will be infinite number of x for which the statement s holds. So now let's turn to proving Gödel's theorem. The proof is based on a simple program. So let's say n is a fixed parameter. Then uh, the fixed value n determines this program A. What the program does is it first runs over all choices for L. So it sets L equals 1, L equals 2, L equals 3, and so on. And for each L, it runs over all possible strings x of length at most L and all possible proofs p of length at most L. And for each choice of x and p, it constructs the statement s, the statement that every program that outputs x has length greater than n. This is just a statement. It writes it down. And it feeds in that statement and the proof p into the proof checker C. Okay. And if the proof checker accepts P as a valid proof of S, then it outputs X. So this is the program. Now, uh, now let's understand how this program works. The first claim I want to make is that the length of this pr program is order log N, meaning that if you think of starting to increase the value of n, make n larger and larger, the length of this program uh, scales as order log n. That's because the code of this program doesn't depend, uh, the, the only place where n shows up in the code of this program is in the statement s. And in s, you just have to write down uh, the value of n in binary, okay? or you write down the digits of n. And this just takes log n bits. Okay. So if n is very, very large, log n grows much slower than n. So if n is very large, n is going to be much bigger than the length of this program. n is going to be bigger than the length of the program. And if n is bigger than the length of the program, the program cannot possibly halt. It cannot halt with an output. Because when it halts with an output, it outputs an x for which it is true that every program that outputs x has length bigger than n, and the length of this program is less than n. Okay, so if you choose n to be large enough, we are guaranteed that this program will never halt. That's the first claim. But that leaves us with Gödel's theorem, because you see, as we discussed before, for this fixed n, there is an x that makes s true. In fact, there are an infinite number of x for which uh, the statement s is true. And if any one of those x's had a proof p, then this program would find that proof. It would eventually find that proof, and it would halt. So that's a contradiction. The only possibility here is that uh, the x that make s true do not have proofs that would con convince the proof checker that they are true, that the statement s is true. So uh, it's a really beautiful theorem. Uh, its proof is extremely short, uh, but very confusing. So uh, uh, I think you should. Uh, Think about it for a few minutes. Now in this video, as in all my videos, I did not discuss the references, and the history of this problem, and the work of all of the people, the, the, the names of the people that actually came up with the ideas that I showed you. But if you look in the description of my video, you'll see all of those things.